You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have on Miles Paul. Uh, He's an up-and-comer. This is his first year fishing the Major League Fishing BFL Trail. Uh, he reached out to me and this is a classic example um i just had the new river episode drop and that thing's absolutely trending on the google search page no one talks about the new river the only way i had that is they reached out to me and said like hey would you like to do this please email me message me i don't care if you want to be on the show i will record four to five nights a week i just love getting these conversations and these stories out there so message me and we'll make it happen and your story is really cool here when if you look at his stats on um, on Major League Fishing, you fished a three events and you have over three grand in winnings. And this includes two top 10 finishes fishing the Shenandoah division, which is that's a hell of a start, bud. That's a real hell of a start. <laughs> yeah, the first one was just like the first top 10. I was just kind of like, a, wow, I just got very lucky. And then the second one came and it was like. The second one was very unexpected or unexpected, but I'm sure we'll get into sure we'll get into that one. Yeah. But. And really before we get into the tournaments, just for our listeners and people watching on YouTube, how did all this how did this journey start for you? Um, did you fish high school or college or anything like that? No, I fish, I didn't fish any high school. School didn't have a team. Um could have fished college. Um like we were talking before there had the scholarship for Bethel through the big bass zone junior championship fished the won my state and went to the uh world championship or whatever they they called it in Missouri Branson Missouri fished Lake Tanny Como oh wow and uh it was super cold <laughs> very cold tournament out there when we fished it was on Halloween weekend and uh i'm sure i don't know if you ever heard of it but it's a big like trout pretty much a trout fishing lake mm-hmm. like everybody okay. goes there to tr- trophy trout fish and it's got bass and then there's just giants and that was that was an experience but finished 12th out there and one of the pit prizes i could have picked was a bethel scholarship and it just How- didn't wasn't. How does that work then? So what what were the options? Was it just the scholarship or was there other things that you could pick from? Oh, there was all kinds of stuff. There was like $350,000 worth of prizes there. Holy yeah. shit. And then including like, uh, I know Marucci gave everybody a pair of sunglasses that made it. I mean, they took one kid from every state. So Marucci gave everybody a pair of sunglasses and St. Croix gave, gave, gave us a rod and uh, another company gave us like shoes and there was all kinds of stuff it was pretty cool it was a really cool experience and then the hotel that everybody was staying at was like all had banners hanging and it was it was a cool experience winter took home a boat that's pretty awesome yeah it was pretty cool i wish back in the day because you know i mean when i fished flw for college like they did not have that kind of prizes that you could give away so that's that's pretty legit so, but then after college, how much of a gap are we talking then between when you, that, that moment in life to this year? Um, that was 2021. After that, uh, I knew that that was kind of my shot at like fishing may like, I thought that that was my only shot at going anywhere was fishing, being from a little town in rural West Virginia. I mean, it's not really a bass fishing place here. Mm-hmm. And I just told myself that I had already started working and I was like, I'm buying a boat. I didn't take the scholarship. I'm, I want a boat. And then I can start fishing tournaments and take my mind off of that, not taking that scholarship. And I did. I bought a boat and the, it was a Bullet 21 XRS. Nice. 250 on it and started fishing tournaments around here last year and 
got my butt kicked. <laughs> the guys around here are just sticks on mm-hmm. all these places. And uh, and then this year I just decided that if I want to go anywhere with it, I'm going to have to get out of the comfort zone and start traveling and fishing a little bit. Uh, when you say and, that outside your comfort zone and traveling, where in West Virginia are you and what would be considered your home waters or where would you fish like a Tuesday night jackpot, so to speak? Um, so I'm from like more close to Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay. Uh, I actually work in Morgantown. Um, I would consider my home waters up close to where my parents live because I keep a boat up there in the garage. Um, so I would consider like my home waters like uh, there's a little lake called Jennings Randolph. It's yep. half, half West Virginia, half Maryland. Um, that's probably my favorite lake. It's got giant smallmouth. Not very many, but it Legend definitely that. has definitely has giant smallmouth. Uh, last two years in a row, I've caught one over six pounds in this in August, the same exact weekend to be exact. Seriously. I caught wow. a set. I caught a seven one that I submitted into that big bass zone zone junior championship because it was a online tournament. I caught it in August, seven one, and then I caught one last year that was a six oh eight out of that place. Holy God! <laughs> On the same and weekend. Then, and then, guys, I'm going to see if I can get this here because this is why you have five screens. Um, so this is Jennings Randolph. Um, and then comparatively, so it's just like, it's just Southeast. Of, yeah. I think it's Southeast, Southeast of deep Creek Lake. Um, and it looks like it's just super steep and deep, like a really oh, river. Retirement. Super deep, super, super deep. So with that it's, said, did you really learn just those finesse, like almost California style techniques? Is that was your bread and butter? Um, I pretty much go at deep go at Jennings completely different than everybody else. Okay. Um, and everybody kind of knows that when we show up for tournaments and I, I don't know. I kind of just go all out. It's either like I'm going to smash them or I'm not going to catch anything. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't went well for me in tournaments yet. <laughs> it just it has not. I mean, I last year when I caught that 608, uh, usually a tournament, a bag that wins a tournament there is like you're talking six seven pounds for five fish i mean that's wow. how that's how bad it is and then i'll go down there me and my friend went down the weekend before just to like kind of pre-fish for the the little tournament and uh we had almost eight or a little over 18 pounds and i don't know it's just crazy that's how that place is uh, I mean, I've only seen one fish in there weighed in that was over like five pounds. Uh, you never see any largemouth weighed in, and small mouth. Yeah, and I have, I have a video on my phone that I took last year, last spring, and in that video, there's like eight four plus four plus pound largemouth that you can see in the video that I'm that I'm taking just swimming all around together and it's like i don't That's know where insane. they go or what but well I love with, that with that said not trying to give away any of your juice but when you say you fish it differently are you meaning like you don't finesse it as much you're more power guy basically yeah. to keep it big okay yeah but it's just so clear it's so clear like i mean you're talking in the summertime you're talking 20 couple foot visibility holy god yeah and just fast you work it fast as fast as you can possibly work your bait reaction yeah you can't you cannot work it too fast i'm telling you and that's how i catch my big my big bigs okay that makes sense but then with that style of you were at you wanting to fish power but you're fishing deep and clear was there a big transition when you decided to go fish the bfls and go fish you know you're gonna have to fish the potomac river which you did the smith kind of plays with randolph i guess with water clarity at least right so uh yeah huge difference uh the potomac river was nothing i've never fished anything like that uh i try i used to fish 
we would go down like in the spring and fish the che- or the Chesapeake Bay, which is somewhat the, about the closest thing I have to the Potomac River because that's the only thing that has grass really that I've ever fished. And I don't, I mean, that was my only, my only really grass fishing that I ever did till the Potomac. That's going to be fun to get into. But then besides, um, you know, uh, Randolph, like what other places do you feel comfortable with that were on the schedule or was everything on this schedule coming up for the BFL season? Was that all brand new to you? Oh, it was the only one that I had a, that I felt a little bit comfortable with what was Smith mountain. Cause I knew that it was just a little bit clearer and wasn't so much just strictly like kind of grass fishing. Uh, I, I wasn't ready for the bed fishing stuff, uh, that I ended up doing at Smith mountain. I've never really bed fished, but I mean, we're going to get, we'll start with Kerr, I guess, and then we'll work our way through it. But first, first off, and I know like her, yeah, well, Hey, we all have to get through Kerr, whether you fish it or talk about it, we all have to get through it. But what made you feel ready to take this jump? Cause when this is what I'm hearing is you fished a couple lakes in West Virginia that have nothing in common with what we're fishing the schedule on. And you're saying the year before you kind of did okay. And now you're like, you know what? chips in let's make this work and it worked it's worked fantastically but was it a gut feeling or or what um pretty much i just like i just wanted to see where i was at uh i mean i knew that i could i knew i knew that i could keep up with the guys around here i mean i know that they're they were way they were older and they've been fishing these places forever and i was still like in the top and it wasn't like I, I knew that I was good enough to go against these good dudes at the BFLs. And I don't know. I just kind of wanted to see where I was at, if I was where I thought I was. And that's kind of where it came from. And I really didn't think that I was going to be anywhere in these BFLs because I knew that these dudes are like locals and they're all sticks in these tournaments. But. I mean, that's pretty much the reason why. And then the reason I really did the Shenandoah division was because it was one of the closer ones. Yeah, I, I guess. Isn't that the closest one for you? Like, what would the second closest one be? Um, I the think Northeast? the Buckeye. The Buckeye, Buckeye. might have might have been a little bit close. Or probably about the same, I would say. Oh, that would have some fun lakes on it. <laughs> yeah. The Ohio River, I'm sure, would be a blast. <laughs> Just like Randolph, except worse. <laughs> Two pounders or kickers there, boy. Yep. So then, well, I mean, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and get through the first one to get to the the funner two tournaments. Kerr Reservoir. Like, how did that go? <laughs> um, Definitely did not go how I was. Well, it all started. I mean, I was all nervous because this is my first big tournament and all this kind of stuff. Well. We went down the weekend before just so I could kind of practice and me and my dad. And we drove after work, got down there at about 1 a.m. I think it was. And next morning went over early, put the boat in the water and motor wouldn't get on plane. Mm. Uh, You know, it was like six something hour drive something like that seven hour drive uh ended up working on the motor all day till about the last 45 minutes of daylight got it running um put the boat back on the trailer went back slept in the truck because i sleep in the bed of my truck um it was freezing cold had a heater a little heater in the back of my truck freezing cold um went back out the next sunday morning um, it was snowing, fished for about two hours and till the front of my front deck of my boat was covered in snow. And then I was like, okay, my dad was freezing. I was like, all right, it's time to go. And then we made the six hour drive home. So I learned absolutely zero mm. about fishing on Kerr. 
didn't do much running around because it was snowing. <laughs> uh, Trial by fire, baby. That's what that is. Yeah. Went down uh, Friday before the tournament, or Thursday night before the tournament. Went out Friday. Pulled up to the my first spot that I'm going to check. Uh, it was like my second cast. Caught one on a spinnerbait. Nice. I'm like, okay. Ended up fishing, practicing the rest of my day with a spinnerbait. Running the kind of same stuff and tried a couple other things and wasn't working out. Uh, zero bites. <laughs> so I'm going into tournament day with absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> absolutely no pattern no no, i didn't know what i was gonna do so i just kind of went out and just fished and it just did not work out and zero what was your co-angler how did how did your co-angler treat you he was all right he was he was good a good co he just uh i was a little frustrated so it probably would have been a better day if i would have been a little happier but i was a little frustrated because it was my first one and Everybody was like asking me how was, how I did after it, and it was just kind of frustrating. But it sucks. It sucks. But as long as like so, the first time I ever drew a co um, in my very first BFL, I remember it was a terrible experience with, with how the person treated me um, because he was like this grizzled veteran, and he kind of treated it like it was a, it was a um, a private fishing charter, and it put a bad taste in my mouth. But I've had other friends that I've had extremely good co anglers their first time that really he's like, all right, this is your first time. I'm gonna go easy on you, kid. Um, and so that it sounds like the your co angler didn't didn't make the day any worse. No, he was he just he was a talker. He talk, he liked to talk and You're not uh, a talker. and I kind of like to get in the get in the zone, especially when I'm not doing good because mm-hmm. uh, I like to run stuff through my head. But um, he definitely liked to talk, and I'm sure he could tell that I was a little frustrated at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it wasn't. He wasn't too bad. Um, my other co's are actually one of I'm really good friends with now, the one from Smith Mountain. But well, yeah, we we got through we got through the shit, and now let's get into the good stuff here, which is. But this this all leads to the story of like okay, so if you had to write this as a book, it it's it's stranger than fiction. The year before, you're doing okay in local stuff. You've never fished any of these things before, like any of these lakes. First tournament, it's literally the worst thing ever to happen. Snowing, boat motor dies, somebody kicked your puppy. It's bad. You go to Smith and you have this gorilla on your back, being like, oh shit. So how what is it like mentally going into Smith Mountain Lake? Um, I was excited for Smith Mountain. I really was because I knew that there was big ones. And I mean, I knew there was big ones in Curry too, but I knew Smith Mountain had big ones and I knew they had been catching them. And at this point, I mean, all my whole season was I wanted to make regional. I wanted to make regional. That's what was my, my goal. And after the zero at Kerr, it kind of like, oh, there's no way I'm going to make it now unless I would win one. So I would say I kind of lost some pressure off my back just knowing that in my head I was like, there's no way I'm going to make the regional with this year. So I kind of just went into it like I'm going to fish Smith Mountain and I'm just going to have fun. I just want to have fun. I want to catch, try to catch one of these big ones because we don't catch big large mouth here. You catch a five pounder here, you're <laughs> right. You down in the record books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just like wanted to catch a big one. That was my goal. And I went down the weekend before. I had a tournament up here uh, on Saturday. When I got done at that tournament, I left straight from that tournament, drove to Smith Mountain, and practiced Sunday, and then drove home, all the way home. Uh, my buddy went with me, but we didn't catch a single bass. That's my mountain. That first, that first day of practice, um, saw a couple cruising around, but it wasn't anything. Um, so I worked that week on a Wednesday night. 
when it's still Wednesday night, practice Thursday and put the boat in the water, started driving drive around, went back in a spot that I wanted to check. And as soon as I started going back through there, I saw my first bed. I was like, okay, it was like a two pounder or something. I'm like, okay. So they they may be their own beds. And there was a bunch of beds back in there, but they were all like two pounders. And I was like, man, they got to be just males. I was like, where are the females at? Never found anything. Um, ended up fishing that first day. And then they caught a couple fish, like a couple little ones. Um, went out the next day, the Friday before the tournament. And finally started seeing some bigger fish. Uh, found a couple bigger bigger ones on beds. Oh, uh, no, I did find a big one on Thursday. I did find a big one on Thursday, and I put in her nose first split. She ate it, and I shook her off. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and check her on Friday. Make sure she's still there. Went back on Friday. She's still there. Um, I didn't want to flip in there again. I knew she was there. I knew she would eat, so I didn't flip in there again. Um, but I ended up finding a bunch. I mean, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I found so many fish on beds. What like what area of the lake were you in? Were, were you where most of the people are, down lake or in Blackwater, or is it just a sneaky deal somewhere else? I went down lake because it. I thought maybe that that's where I'd find bigger fish and it was a little bit clearer water. I knew. So I went down the lake. So you wanted clearer water where you, I wanted, I wanted clearer water just so I could see what the big ones were doing. I mean, I saw, I could find the little ones. I just, I just wasn't seeing any big fish is whenever I made the run down lake. Mm. So I wanted to see if they were deeper or if they were just kind of be bopping around or whatever they were doing. So I went down the lake Saw some bigger ones, but there was like nothing. I couldn't find anything like I was finding up, up lake. I can't remember what the name of that, that that part of the lake is. So more mid lake or like up into the Roanoke River. It was probably. I don't think that I was way up in the river, but I okay. made me right at the mouth, kind of the river. Um, this is where I found most of my fish. Uh, there was just a lot of like, I noticed that I was finding a lot of like the same size fish, like four pounders, four and a half pounders. Uh, and then I had that one that I found on Thursday that I thought was like five, maybe. And I was getting down to the end of the day, Friday, found one. She, she came out from underneath, like a, there was like steps coming down off of dock into the bottom she came out from underneath him and ate it oh. and she was a bit she was a big like a, a big big uh and i knew that she was hidden i'm like okay that's a big one i need that one i'm guessing mm, probably seven pounds she was a big one definitely yeah. by far the biggest fish i had seen um so was your whole plan then at this point friday evening i'm just going to sight fish and run all these fish that i've waypointed Yes. Is that primary um, thing? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I had one spot up, uh, whatever that. What's the river? It'd be on the right side of the lake. There's the river that goes up in there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the. the this rivers. is why I always have Google Maps open. Uh, you got two. You got the you got the split, which is what you're talking about. Um, on Smith, right? Up it's the. Yeah, this is the Roanoke, which is the main stem. All right, so I was I was up there. I wasn't all the way up in there, though. Um, I had a spot up in there, a little cut, where I had caught fish just fishing. Like, just... The water was super dirty. It was, like, super chocolate milk dirty. And it was the only place that I could get bit just fishing. So I kind of had that in the back of my head, like... If all else failed and these bed fish weren't here, I could run there and maybe catch five just fishing. But how um, daunting was this then in practice? Because I mean, this is the biggest lake that's in that's completely contained within Virginia. Smith is massive. 
and you've never been there before. And so with your three days of practice or however many total days you had, how the hell did you decide to break this down? Was it one day go down, one day go up? Um, you know, I pretty much, once I found, once I went down and what I saw down, I only was down there for probably only an hour, hour and a half. And that's, that was, I had saw enough. I wanted to go back, back up. Uh, I liked what I saw more up there. I was seeing more fish. I kind of knew what I was looking for, what I wanted whenever I like what I wanted in a bank and then a cut. Um, so fast forward to the end of the end of Friday, the end of practice, my last day. Um, my dad's with me. He, he had never, he, he doesn't bass fish much like he at all, a little, a little bit here and there when he goes with me. Um, we're running down the lake from the plot, the spot that I just found where I was catching them, just fishing, um, running down the lake. I go, I'm driving past this one spot. I look over at it and I'm like, man, I'm like, that looks good. I should go check that. And I just kept going. I'm like, no, I'm got to get back. I was running out of time. I had to get back for the meeting. Um, I'm watching, I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, <laughs> I really want to go look at that. And I just kept going and uh, my dad's like, you better go look at it. I turned to you. I was already like halfway down the lake past it. And I was like, all right, I'm going. I turned around, went all the way back, pulled in there, jumped up on the front, threw the trolling motor in. And when I threw the trolling motor in, I couldn't believe my eyes. The biggest fish I had seen all week sitting there. 25 yards from the boat on a bed. Seven plus pounder. Giant. Uh, wow, dude. I was like, holy crap. There she is. This is her. This is one I need. If I can catch this one and that other one, I'm going to be the happiest man alive. Well, they're out and they have two fish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're, I'm, I kind of just throw at her. She didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, and my dad, he kind of just flips over there to her, n- not thinking, because he doesn't really know about bedfish or anything. She comes up and eats his wacky rig. Oh, shit. And he's he's holding it, and he's like, do I shake her off? <laughs> you want me to shake her off? And I'm like, I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, he's never caught a big one. I'd love to see him catch a big one. I'm like, no, go ahead. Just get her. He sets a hook. Snap. Oh, oh, my oh God. no! Like I'm like, oh, oh. My gosh, oh, it's brutal. I was so like mad, upset. Uh, Damn, I wasn't expecting that shit. We were kind of just like looking at each other, like, "Are you kidding me?" She ate it right at the boat. It was like, so I was like, oh, shake it off, and I just kept going down that bank, and just a no nothing bank. Nothing on it, no docks, no nothing. Just the, the, a, why did you want to stop there? What 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 spoke to you? I had another bank that I had found that only had one dock on it. And that was the bank that I saw the most beds on. It only hmm. had one one dock. It just seemed like a bank that there wasn't much human traffic or boat traffic or anything like that. It just seemed like it was just a bank where a fish could get there and wouldn't have to worry about much. Hmm like people on their docks and all that kind of stuff. So that's, I don't know. I don't know. I just looked at it and I was like, that bank looks good. I'd like to go check it. And anyways, I'm rolling down that bank and about 50 yards, 60 yards on down the bank. I see something and I'm like, okay, there's no way I'm seeing this right. Oh no, you're kidding. Another you're kidding. guy, oh another God, dude six seven pounder on a bed giant uh i couldn't believe it i'm sitting there looking at her i'm like okay this is all i need to know i'm like that's it and i just look i look as i'm saying that i look over and there's a a bush like i don't know there's probably six inches up on the bush there and i'm looking and i'm like man there's no way i'm seeing this right another one 
25 yards on down the back, there's another one, six pounder, seven pounder on a bed. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's three on this bank. Dude. I'm thinking to myself, and it's an obvious spot, and a super obvious spot, I feel like. And never in my life did I think I was like, I ain't got a chance with these. Somebody's mm-hmm. going to find them. Uh, so I'm, le- I'm leaving. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I don't want anybody to see me over here. I got to get out of here. So I'm leaving. And we go back past that one. My dad broke off one. And uh, I just cast my, mat- my mag graft up there and start cranking it by her. And she comes chasing this thing. Full bore, clear to the boat, and I'm just reeling it as fast as I can to keep it away from her and pull it out of the water before she can eat it. The same one that he had broke off on, I'm sure. I know it's the same fish. That's insane. But that was, I mean, I still, at that point, I was like, hopefully I can catch 17. I mean, I was kind of open. So what is your game plan then Saturday? Was it to run straight to her first and just try? Um, I, that was, took a lot of des- deciding because I really, really, really thought that I could catch that one that I found on Thursday that I flipped to first flip. I really, really thought that I could catch her like first flip and I'd have a five pounder in a boat. And But I was like, man, if I could just catch even two of those mm-hmm. on that other place, I've already got a solid. I mean, I've got, I'm working on a solid bag with two fish. Yeah. Early. So I'm like, I'm going there first. So I take off and I'm going to that spot with those three big ones. And when I get there, there's a, a boat there. Dang. Had a terrible, terrible boat draw. I was like, ah, oh, dang. So I left. Turned straight around and went straight to that one. Pulled over there. She's gone. The one that I found on Thursday. Gone. Nowhere to be found. Mail's gone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Start fishing around. Co catches one. Co catches another one. I don't even have a fish yet. What time is it? Oh, uh, probably, like... mm, probably nine, nine ooh, o'clock. Oof, oof. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Uh, it was definitely a rough start for me. Um, I was hoping that the when that song came out that they would come back, some of my bed fish. Uh, and they did. They started coming out. And my first one, I can't remember what my first, where my first one came from. Hmm. I can't remember. But I ended up catching catching a couple here and there. And. I had just some small ones. And was well, this just sight casting, basically? Yeah, just I had okay. some some beds where I had like fish that were like two pounds or something like that, and all my big fish were like gone on beds. Uh, so I went to this one spot where I had I had found three three fish. Uh two of them were like two like four pounders, and then there was one like five on the same kind of in the same spot, kind of same bed. It was really weird. I've never hmm. seen anything like it. I'm sure some of these bed fishing guys would know more about it than I would. Uh, but they were all three kind of like they're like almost like spawning kind of all three of them in the same spot. It was really weird. Um, but I went there just I don't know why I just decided I was going to check them. Uh, went there and I could see her. I'm like, here we go. I got to catch the big one before those two, the other two. Flip over there with the uh, wacky rig. Nothing. Well, she wouldn't even look at it. Uh, jig. Uh, glide bait. Um, D-bomb. I flip over there with that. Uh, nothing. She would not look at anything. She would take She would take off away from the bait. Uh, and I pick up. She's facing the bank. And she's only about three feet off the bank. And... I take my mag dress and I flip it over there and it hits the water. And I kid you not, I bet I didn't get a full crank in that reel. And she ate that thing head first. Oh my God. Like five and a half pounder. (sighs) And 
my co my co nets it for me (laughs) my co nets it for me and she's bleeding like absolute crazy she'd swallowed that mag draft cleared up head first clear down um bleeding like crazy i get some juice on her put her in the box put ice in there internal research just constant manual and I'm like, I'm leaving it on all day. <laughs> I'm leaving it, leaving it on recirc all day because I knew she was probably already stressed from yeah. spawn. Um, so I, as soon as I leave there, I start going up the bank again. I knew there was another like four and a half right up the bank. Uh, flip in there a couple times on her. She wouldn't even touch it. Uh, so I let my co flip in there. He flips in there with a co with a shaky head and a couple other things and he kind of gives up one or two. So he gets stuck. My co gets stuck. So oh my gosh. I'm he breaks off and I'm he's retying and I'm like, well I'm gonna leave after this, after you retie. So I'm I just turn around, turn the boat around and start flipping to that fish. And he's retying and I flip in there with a uh, uh bitsy bug. Just a little <laughs> jig. Bitsy bug. I don't know what it was about that specific jig that I had on, but they hated it. <laughs> uh, I'd flip like the the wacky rig just was not happening for me. Like Cole Huskins, the dude that yeah. wanted, he said he was catching all his on that and mm-hmm. shaky head. It just was not happening for me. I could not so get it to work. Uh, I kept flipping at that fish and. One time I flip in there and she bit it. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, maybe I can catch her. Flip in there again. She bites it. Just pick it up, pinchers. I'm like, ah. Flip in there again. Hammers it. Catch her four and a half pounder. So I just went from having three two pounders to having three two pounders and a five and a half and a four and a half. Uh, so quick on that turns yeah in like 10 minutes um so i'm like okay i'm gonna run and see if my if my big ones are open now and i roll out of there i go over to those big ones first one the one that my dad broke off on and chase my up mag has gone uh gone i just i don't know where she went i went down to the next one it was so scared to death Guess the dude that was there earlier might have just fished for her pretty hard and scared her. Um, but she was scared to death. Went down to the the next the next one, right down past the second one, and she was there. Showed absolutely zero interest in my bait at all. Uh, I was kind of heartbroken because I was like, I could really use one of you right now. <laughs> Uh, so I left there, went up in where I just, where I thought I could just catch them just fishing. Um, went up in there. First cast, I remember I told my, my co, I wasn't even going to go up there. I wasn't even going to do it. I was just going to strictly sight fish. Um, told my co, I was like, this is the only place up this river that I've had any bites. And I pull in there, pick up the mag graft and First cast, as soon as it hits the water, catch one, it's like a three-pounder. Dude. First, first cast. Dude. Uh, he's like, I guess you're not lying, huh? <laughs> I was like, I was like, that wasn't, didn't happen like that the other day, but. Uh, Man, it's your time at your time. I mean, it's just insane. It was. Do that. It was. Um, I ended up leaving there. Well, kept, kept fishing around in there. Uh found was just fishing under this one dock in there where i'd had a big bite in practice um and i I saw a fish kind of like boil and it was super muddy muddy water super muddy and i'd seen it i was like there's no way that was a bass but you know how it is you just gotta you gotta cast back there and got it cast with that mag graph and it hits the water and as soon as it hits the water like a five pounder eats it i come tight on it 
through like three or four cranks. It's jumping. I'm like, oh my gosh, Kogus, and that fish comes off. Right oh, God. oh, my oh, God. that hurts. But at this point, I'm like, I'm still thinking it's gonna take like 24, 25 to win. Which I mean, it did pretty much. Pretty much, um, too, Yeah. Um. And. Mm. I, I mean, I only, I was like, I only got like 15 or something like that. So I was, wasn't really sweating it too bad. Um, I mean, it's still a lot. Don't, I'm not going to lie, I was heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, but also going from zero at Kerr and freezing to death to 15 right. pounds fish, it's like, right. it, you got to feel pretty. It's a solid finish no matter what right. for you. Right. Um, so I left there and I was all my bites there. Uh, left there and I was, just going to drive past, past them, them fish. Um, decided I was going to stop and check them. I went there to check them and there was a boat there. I'm like, oh my gosh. That was like the third boat I've seen there or something like that. I'd seen like three or four boats on them fish. Um, and one was gone. So I was guessing it got caught. Uh, so I was like, I got to go check the one underneath those stairs. Uh, and I knew I was kind of saving her because I was like, I don't need to go to her. I don't think anybody's going to see her. Uh, and I go there and she's gone. Mm. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I think it had to do with that big thunderstorm yeah. the night before. Um, uh, not sure, but she was gone. So kind of fished around, caught another nice one, like three, three and a half pounder or something like that. Um. Then I left, I left there and it was getting down to the end of the day. And I'm like, all right, I'm going back to my, my big ones, go back to my big ones. It's open. I'm like, here we go. Here we go. This is it. Well, luckily when I positioned the boat, my co could flip to that other big one because it was close enough. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like I was kind of keeping him out of the, Yeah. there was other beds there for him to fish at. So I didn't feel like I was kind of being that guy. Mm -hmm. Backboating him. Yeah, and so I just pulled power pole down and started flipping at that big one and flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped, and flipped, and flipped. <laughs> all different baits. They would she would not look at anything, and I put that baby D bomb on and started flipping it in there, and I bet I flipped in there, just trying to find the sweet spot or something that making her change her attitude a little bit. Uh, flipped in there, male just out of nowhere. The male just eats it, and I was like, "Okay, he's just little though." So I'm like, "Well, when he eats it, she shoots over, and she's like face to face with him, and he's chewing on it, my bait, and I'm watching him, I'm watching him, and when he spits my bait out, he spits it out, and before it hits the bottom, she sucks it in." Oh my god, dude, that is and, such a freaking break. Oh, it was so cool. And I said the hook and ended up catching her. That was my biggest one of the day. Uh I don't know. I didn't weigh big fish like an idiot. I should have. I'm guessing you, she had she had think? to have been she had to have been over six. Had to have been. Oh my god. I should have weighed big fish, but I was just so excited and I was like Did the, did time slow down in that moment? Because I feel like I might have just leaned back on him or tried to pull him off. Like, did you mentally something tell you like I just gotta like not set the hook? I just, I, I don't know when she shot over there, when she shot over there and was face to face with him, I was like, something changed right there. She did not like that. He had to eat something or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to just let him spit it out. And I mean, she, he had it for, felt like he, a two a minutes, but yeah. I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was only like 10 seconds, <laughs> Dude. but it was, that was the craziest thing. I mean, when as soon as he spit it out, she ate it, and and that that gave you nineteen fifteen yeah. and over seven hundred dollars. So that's, dude, that's gotta just justify or or counteract all that stuff that happened at Kerr. Oh yeah, to have that and just to be almost clean slate. Yep, it definitely was. And that it gets definitely. you into Potomac, then, right? Because like, so now at this point. You can just wipe Kerr off the table. It never happened. You just cracked a 
fantastic top 10, 19 pounds, by the way, which is just a slosh for that. It's amazing to catch that kind of weight. Now you go into the Patamock, tidal, grassy, shallow. What was your impression of that place? Uh, it was uh, – when I first got down there, I had no idea that that place was that big. It was overwhelming. <laughs> very overwhelming because most of our lakes around here you as you can see from jennings super super small yeah um i don't know i just started kind of doing my own thing uh i mean like because you've never been there before i think this is great insight for people that want to learn a new body of water like you said it's massive how did you how did you figure out where you wanted to start like what section to begin with like how did you figure any of that out uh i kind of narrowed it down to like three sections kind of um i wanted to start i wanted to fish potomac creek and aquia so and they were way down they the river. Were, yeah and they were pretty close so i put in at what is that hope spring yeah it's hope Arena? springs right yeah. and aquia and fished around in there the one day and then made the just run to the potomac and fished those two and uh then the next one of the other days i put in at this other place and ran through uh what was it quantico creek and uh what was the creek by the, the small wood there uh, uh, chicken muscle. yeah and then fished around on that one um I caught fish in Quantico in practice. It was probably me, probably my best spot that I had going in practice uh, till my like second day of practice and, or second to last day of practice. Um, then I fished Bel- the flats of, at Belmont Bay, which the were hole. yeah, which were a cluster. Yeah, uh, I knew that I didn't like that. Caught my bit, caught my biggest fish biggest fish in practice at Belmont Bay in the flats. Um, it was only like a three pounder or something, but knew that that's not what I wanted to do in the tournament. Um, so I went back to, I liked the quiet and Potomac the most. Uh, that's a lot of gas you're burning. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. So I liked it. I liked it the most out of those, out of everywhere I've fished. Uh, so I went back to Aquia. found a spot in Aquia that, I liked it high tide and me and my buddy that were practicing ended up like smashing up. We were catching up like every cast and high tide. Uh, and I was like, I got to start here. Well, this was the weekend before and I was practicing. So I was like, I got Thursday and Friday. I'm going to, ch- I'll just check it. Those at high tides those days. Well, I checked it those two days, Thursday and Friday, um, zero bites. Mm. I had, I caught one bass and the two days before the tournament, Thursday and Friday, I had one bass and then I think it was like a 12 incher. Uh, going into the tournament, I had absolutely zero idea what I was going to do. Um, God. I was completely clueless. I, my parents came down, uh, shout out to them driving down. My mom was all upset cause she missed the Smith mountain one. And Dude, I did good. That's, oh, that's so freaking awesome. Uh, so, so then what do you, you're, you're in the boat with your co-angler and the co-angler says, where we're going. Are you like, I have no idea. Like, or, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, <laughs> I was like, not to alarm you, man, but I'm really not sure yet. I'm going to decide to not take it off here in a second. Um, I, I don't know what just made me decide to just go to make the run to Aquia. First thing I knew that if I wanted to fish that spot that I fished in Aquia, I needed to do it on high tide. Um, I knew that I couldn't fish it if it was low tide or the water was down at all. Um, so I went there and then the water was perfect and it was like first cast. My co caught one, Mm. uh, keeper. Then he catches another one. Um, I'm like, holy crap, (laughs) they're here. So I start, I start fishing with what I was catching with the other day, catch one. 14 inch um, and it need was 15 inch limit of course um yeah. catch another catch another one 14 and a half my co catches another one keeper he's got three keepers and i've got two shorts <laughs> i'm like oh my gosh how are you doing mentally at this point um a little frustrated just touch 
to be mm-hmm. frustrated. Uh, Plus so, the title situation, like how much time are you thinking of spending right. for the title I'm, flips? I'm, I'm no, I knew I didn't have. I'm, I'm was guessing maybe an hour and a half, maybe before I was running out of water. Uh, but I told myself I was staying there until I physically could not stay there any longer because that was the mm-hmm. only place I had fish. Um, and fishing around these pads, co pitches up there. I'd pitch to this spot like four times. So it was like a little indention in the pads. Uh, he sets a drag peel and he's like, gotta be a catfish. Gotta be a catfish. I get the net. This fish comes up. I was like, oh my gosh, you have got to be kidding me. It ended up being a 4-8. Dang, dude. I'm like, holy crap. I still didn't have a keeper at this time. Mm. <laughs> and he's got three some don't 15 stuff. inches and a four eight uh so i'm getting pretty frustrated well i end up catching a couple end up catching like four or something like that or end up catching yeah four and i got them out of there and i ain't got like nothing just like four keepers barely and uh i don't know what to do <laughs> i i had caught one one that one bass that 12 incher in uh the potomac creek there and i was like i guess go back at least there's bass there i mean i don't know that they're gonna be worth anything but so i go back start fishing through there and i found a spot that looked like a bed but i didn't see anything on it so i wanted to check that just to make sure and i pulled up there and flipped that sinko in there as soon as it hit the water it ate it set the hook snap on the hook set oh my god i'm like oh my gosh what just happened Jeez. and just being lazy didn't retie didn't check my line uh what poundage were you using for that when you're flipping i was just using 10 pound flora on my spinning rod. oh spinning okay that was a flipping on my okay. spinning yeah on my spinning rod mm. um and i ended up breaking off on that one like i said so i'm like i'm gonna go up here and look and see what this fish was at least mm-hmm. and it has real thick mat and get up there and i'm looking i can't see her and i just look over and i see another one i'm like okay flip over there it eats it catch it my fifth fish I'm like sweet got five got five That's yeah five more than i pictured i was gonna have um and i just keep, kept going around through there and started seeing beds and i was like okay this is where i'm gonna be all day did you have a potomac creek to yourself uh this little spot that i had i only saw one other boat at. okay because usually like a choir guys which is like right above it usually like where the beach is in the front gets pounded generally speaking there's tons of boat traffic there and then potomac creek is one below that which also means you're getting further and further away from smallwood state park too yeah which you gotta keep in the back of your head right but uh yeah, it was like the the mat. The there was like the real thick mat, and I was trying to like sneak through that grass and trolling motors on ten. And I was like, it's just bad. It isn't bad fishing. I had a bad fish here. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just catching. It's all little ones on beds too. I was like, there's gotta be a big one somewhere. And I come around this dock, and when I come around this dock, I like can't believe my eyes. I see two four pounders on a bed on beds like side by side you're kidding i'm like holy crap <laughs> this is it <laughs> um power pull down like second flip catch the first one ended up being like oh i'm guessing it was like a three and a half pounder um and i just kind of sat there and i was as i was sitting there it was just like as the day went on just more fish kept moving up i mean my co would be like, there's a big, there's a four pounder right there. And I'd be like, where? And I'd look over and it'd be a different fish I hadn't seen before. And I'd look over and then there'd be a four and a half pounder cruising. And then it was just like, I bet I saw 20, I mean, easily over 20 pounds in that little, while I was power pulled down right there. And I can't believe you had that much of it to yourself. That's insane on the Potomac. That's a unicorn. I mean, it was only, it was only like a 50 yard stretch between mm-hmm. two docks. And when I would go to the other side of the dock, like the far side of the dock, wouldn't I didn't see a single fish, hmm. and it was only like that one little 
spot right there. I don't know what it was about that spot, but they were just stacked in there. That's and insane, dude. I ended up catching, calling out all my fish that I had caught previous to that right there. Caught yeah. all five of them right there while I was power pulled down. And my coke, I think he caught, he caught another one there. But he caught one there. But, yeah, it was – I mean, I caught all my fish in a 50-yard stretch. Didn't even raise the power poles. Dude, that's awesome. Now, did you ever see any, like, five- to six-pounders there? Is that the biggest thing that you felt like you were missing was that big, solid kicker? Um, I I knew – I mean, the one that was there might have been four and a half. But I really thought that my chance at that kicker was that one that that my co caught. I mean, I was like, that was my chance at a big one until I found those ones. And I was like, well, these are four pounders. If I can just catch two of these, mm-hmm. then I'll be around there. But still, my co was from, from down there. And he was like, it'll take 22 to win, 23 to win. And I was like. No, I, I walked through that with my show, too. Like, the last year it took that amount of weight was the last year I fished the BFLs, which was like 2019, where it was like. I came in like seventh or eighth in a BFL and I had 19 pounds. Like it was, it's been a long time since the river has been where it's like having massive stacked weights up there. Um, what I was shocked about more was like 16 for second place. Then Alex had 18. That's a massive jump between first right. and second. Like that was surprising to me more so than anything, but he's the only one that found that, that one extra bite basically. Right. Yeah. I mean, Hey, there's a lot of like ifs, if ands and buts about it, but uh I mean I was definitely I definitely had more than enough fish right there to win this thing. I mean I had twenty pounds in front of me. Oh easily. But it was like they were tough to get to bite, very tough to get to bite. Um I don't know why. It just I just just struggled to get them to bite. Uh I had one that uh bit it would bite it and just would pick up uh on the bitsy bug again i brought it back out and they would eat they kept eating it but uh it just pick up the pinchers and i could just could not get her to eat i mean mm. she'd pick it up and carry it and i was like gosh just eat it and you couldn't get the wacky worm to work either this day mm. that's insane the wacky worm just did not play at all in your bed fishing nope. i mean I, i'd catch them when i was at that other spot i was catching all my fish on a texas rig okay weightless texas rig i could not get them to eat a wacky for some reason i don't know why my co was but i just could not that's what he was catching his on was it a different that's weird where you can't and he can was it a different bait he was using or something it was about the same it was a little little different color um i had dipped my the tip of my the tip of mine in like a little bit of chartreuse but I mean, that was really the only difference. I don't know that that made a difference, but that's the it, biggest mind blow is I remember I drew somebody in ABA a couple of years ago up on the upper bay. I try. He absolutely smoked my ass. I think he called like 10 times in the back of the boat using absolutely everything, everything that I was using and nothing I could do worked. It was insane. Like Texas rigged worm, not pegged. I threw the same thing as him. He threw the same thing as me. I couldn't catch shit. And that is the most mind melting thing. Yes, it is in the world. And so I can't imagine when you're there and he's hitting it from the back and you're like, I'm throwing the same shit. What is going on? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, There was after he caught that four, eight and I didn't have anything. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to throw on a wacky rig or something here and at least try to figure out something because i was throwing a text rig and he was throwing a wacky but mm. i mean i threw the the wacky and wouldn't get bit and i was like i'm gonna have to try a different collar but it was like i don't know he was definitely making me change my mind a little bit but luckily i kept with it and it worked out but and then getting back to your tournament day so like guys, like I mentioned earlier, Potomac Creek is pretty far from from Smallwood State Park. So, what what are you doing time wise here? Like, what time did you finally call out? Were you worried about being able to get your weight before you had to leave? Yeah, um, really. When I found those big ones, uh, I only had like probably an hour 
an hour and 15 minutes to catch those fish. Uh, if I would have had a little bit longer, I might have been able to aggravate that one a little bit to get them to eat, to get them to eat all the way. Um, I pushed it till I, till I could, as long as I could. Yeah. But I was just, I mean, I had no complaints at all. I mean, that was way more weight than I thought I was going to have. Uh, I just, I do think in the back of my mind, I was like, man, if I just had 30 more minutes, I probably could have that another four pounder and call out that two and a half and been right there at the top with Alex. Like, I mean, right there. I mean, you, you were so close, but then again, like you, you did it like in that way. And when did you know that you had it? Oh, no idea. Zero idea. Like when I got there, I had no clue. My whole family was there. Cause I have family that lives down there. Uh, like my mom, my dad, my, uncle um my other uncle my aunt there everybody was there uh and it was just i was just happy to have five well really when i when i knew i had a little bit of something was whenever my dad was holding my bag for me a weigh-in bag uh i started pulling him out and he goes i think you're gonna do better than you think and he's always super mellow about it super calm about it uh He's like, you're gonna be up there. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, I'm still, I'm still thinking of my co. He's like, 22 is gonna. Win. Um. And he's like, you're gonna be up there. I'm like, no. Nah. Well, I put him in the bag and I pull out my last, my last one. He's like, holy crap. He's like, that's a big one. Compared to what these guys are weighing in, I'm like. Oh. That's and insane, dude. That's awesome. Go up there and put him on the scale. And at this point, I still, I didn't even look. I was just so pumped that I'd, I had five nice ones and uh, put them on the scale. I didn't even look what was leading. I saw that I had 16, was it 16, 13? Um, 16, 13, yep. 16, 13. And I, I saw the 16, 13 and I was like, yeah, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. And he's like, that's got you sitting in second place. And I'm like, wait, well, hold up. You said second place? Holy shit. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in second place. <laughs> how many I'm boats like, are for you, or how many boats still have to go? Oh, I had a lot. I was oh, like, shit. I was like, I forget boat. I might have been like third flight, maybe, or something like that. I was, I was, and I came in a little bit early, so I was, I was early, 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 and uh, whew, I was just ready for it to be over because. Sweating it the whole time, my pants were sweating it. Ever, mm. yeah, that was. I couldn't imagine being Alex. Ain't no way. Uh, if I <laughs> win one again, I never want to be. I don't want an early draw. I want a late draw. I want to either be like last dude. Not, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hot seat yeah. sucks. Yeah, it does. That was like the worst thing. Standing there, everybody's texting me that was watching weigh ins. They're like, "Dude, what do you think?" I'm like, "I don't know, man." I was like. You gotta stop texting me. I'm already pacing around. Uh, but was, you, but you did it, fun. dude. Over three thousand dollars in winnings, two top tens. I mean, I, I, I mean, hell, if I had to run your percent, I mean, your percentage right now is out of this world. So let's just say you have a sixty-six percent chance of cracking money every time you go. So no pressure. That that's freaking awesome. Yeah, the, the James is definitely gonna be, and just another different experience for me that's for sure i've never been never been to the james so how are you going to break it down do you do a lot of like a google earth searches things like yeah that? And, okay. i do i do a lot of that um i'm just gonna go i i don't know i kind of like the idea of just finding stuff myself it makes me feel a little bit better about it uh, i feel like i've got a little bit more to myself or have a chance of having it to myself more if i'm not like looking it up online and like going there and catching them there and like, like the community hole. And I don't know. I just feel like if I can find it for myself, I might have a better chance of having it to myself during the tournament. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause that's the problem is if you start running other people's patterns, you're also going to probably bump into those other people right. there. Um, because right. I mean like 
you finding something in the Potomac Creek. I mean, Potomac Creek, I think it was three years ago at one of big national tournaments. So people know about Potomac Creek, but right. um, the way that you were able to find something else in there is, I mean, did you spend a lot of time in that creek or was it more just like five minutes you were in there and that was the area? It was just, it, I wasn't in there very long. I mean, like you said, like I just saw that, that kind of spot and it was kind of, it was near like a where a major, well, I knew there was like a lot of people that fished that one there was like a cut and then this was kind of like just right around the bend from it and it was mm. like just one of those places i thought people might overlook and that's impressive for that place that you found a place because that, that's what rewards you on the potomac is if you find something a little different that that will reward you if you move away from the crowd and you can do that within a spot like you know with the way alex did it alex just moved off and you guys you know i i interviewed alex a while back about his win how he just he found a place within the place in belmont right. bay belmont bay is right. like an insane community hole and you can win there i won an aba a year or two ago fishing mad woman off spot within a spot like it, it's just it's it's so weird when you grow up fishing this place because it's so community holeish that you just get used to having boats around you more so than I think if it's like a Smith mountain Lake, it's just so weird. It really is. Right. Yeah. I've definitely learned that. Uh, I don't know. This, this has been kind of crazy because around here it's like everybody fishes the same. I mean, the lake's so small I mean, we only have like 20 some boats in That's our true. tournaments, but um, I mean, you, you're always fishing the same stuff as everybody else. I mean, everybody, you can pretty much cover the whole lake in one in the tournament if you wanted to. So you kind of have to find stuff that just a little bit different than everybody else is doing around here. If you want to win or do good, be in the top, because everybody's doing fish in the same water. Um, How much of it comes down to boat draw when you are in these tight lakes? Uh, most of the tournaments that I fish are first come first launch. So, so you just, you just get up as early as you can possibly get. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know guys that sleep at the ramp. Oh my God. And it's like, for me, it's, I mean, these ones around here aren't that personal. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I've been there super early before, but usually the earliest I've ever been there is like three hours before the tournament starts or something like that. And there's like three guys there already. That's it's like, holy yeah. moly, that's insane. That's but these insane. Dudes, dudes around here are sticks, and I they kick my butt. I can't say nothing bad about it. There's something to be said about experience on a lake. I mean, a hundred percent, dude. Yeah, because I know I'm going to High Rock, and it's like it's hard to beat somebody that's been there for 20 years straight and knows every right. brush pile. But if you find something a little different, you get eyes on it a little bit differently things can happen like what you did too like i mean it, it can happen and i'm super excited for you going to the james river um i mean do you have anything else coming up or anything else that you'd like to plug uh social media wise or sponsor wise mm, not really i mean just i need to i want to make the regional i mean up back and gave myself myself a shot at it now uh came back from that zero with the two top tens it kind of shot me back up to within within reach so 56 you're in 56th place with 512 points so you know i mean you're right there but even even if you didn't make angler of the year i mean it's a hell of a finish to have a second place in the top t two top tens in a year that's yeah remarkable yeah, remarkable. yeah the, after the first top 10 i was like well that makes up for not making regional <laughs> just having a top 10 but i was you know the i got the first top 10 and i was like man that's awesome having a top 10 but i didn't get a trophy and i was like the trophy is more important to me than the money i just okay. want one of those trophies and like my parents didn't get that and i was like like when i'm standing there at the potomac i'm like if i get knocked out of the top five <laughs> i'm gonna be so mad <laughs> because all i want is one of those trophies i don't care what number it's got on it I just want one. What does the new trophy look like, by the way? Oh, no, I can get it real quick. Yeah, you show that thing off. Every man's got to be able to show off his trophy. That's the thing that I miss. Is... This is the pride and joy. <laughs> oh, dude, that thing looks really nice. 
MLF. Yeah, that's pretty much like the old BFL ones. That is so freaking cool. Dude, congratulations. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. It, it, it also solidifies. You know, when I fished college derbies, I always thought I, I was good just because of the college team format. And until I actually won a big event on my own as a boater, I really had doubts about my skills. And then uh, I think it was 2019, like I won uh, the ABA Open Series. Uh, against like 250 boats and at that point it's like oh i can fish and it's so weird like once you have a second place or first place finish all of a sudden you like you have that confidence back into your skills like how do you feel now that you have that second place in that top 10 has it calmed you down a lot oh yeah for sure um yeah big time um just knowing that i can actually compete with these guys is because i mean i try to tell people it's like they don't realize I mean, these guys are the guys I'm fishing against the Potomac are the best of the best on the Potomac. I mean, it they does, doesn't really get much better than that on the Potomac. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just cool to like compete and know that I can keep up with these guys. Uh, that was probably the biggest like confidence booster, and I needed it. I really did. Um, just to know that I can actually compete with them, and that was the big the big jump that I needed and now I'm more hungry than ever. <laughs> so uh, there's the last thing before I let you go here is what are some other hidden gems or some lakes that people don't really think about when they think about West Virginia, because I know, you know, when I'm fishing the DMV and West Virginia, like really hooks right in there to that Maryland, uh, Virginia pocket. Randolph Jennings is one that I've really, I've, I've known of, but haven't really taken a lot of time to really get to know better. Like, are there other lakes like that? that you cut your teeth in um i used to like a mount storm it's a power plant lake uh it was kind of cool because you could fish it in the middle of winter really uh it could be in the negatives and you could go up there and the water would be that's whenever they would be spawning in the that's middle insane. of because it's just so hot from the power plant uh but it's not like that anymore the fishing's horrible uh Tournament, last tournament I fished up there, like two fish won it. It's Ugh. just, yeah, bad. Um, I don't know if there's a fish kill or what, but they haven't been running the plan, and it's just been. But that place is kind of downhill now. Uh, Deep Creek, I mean, Deep Creek's another place that I feel like. Deep Creek is legit. Yeah, Deep Creek is legit, and especially at certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. that's one place that i haven't really figured out yet really <laughs> kind of kicks my butt uh every time i go there i just seem to catch smallmouth <laughs> and everybody's like how are you catching smallmouth and it's like i'm doing the same thing as you dude i just only the smallmouth that's what i'm catching but uh stonewall jackson um there were some youth kids that fish a tournament there for a high school i think it was the um berkeley springs high school that place is tough uh <laughs> So. I got some buddies that fish down there and they tear them up. Really? They tear them up. Big ones. Um, I've never, I haven't really fished it much. Um, Cause a lot of those West Virginia lakes uh, are kind of like Raystown reservoir. That's up in PA where it's just very narrow yeah. and just mm -hmm. is absolute shit. Yeah. I fished Raytown, Raystown once in early spring, caught one fish and it was like four and a half pounds small mouth. <laughs> You and your smallmouth, dude. Man, you should have fished the Northern Series. I thought about it. I really, really did. Just, I love smallmouth. I love smallmouth. My, definitely, I feel like more of a smallmouth fisherman than a largemouth fisherman. But I love river smallmouth. I do not like lake smallmouth. Those those suckers are just too. They move so much. It's insane. Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, but I don't know why I decided to go with the Shenandoah Division worse strictly pretty much all largemouth other than it's idle and shallow yeah. and dirty yeah. right <laughs> exactly exactly the thing you didn't grow up fishing constantly exactly but dude there's some wisdom in that but no miles i mean thank you so much for joining i really appreciate it um you know a link in the episode description guys to everything we talked about today and then is there anyone that you'd like to plug or just give a shout out to just my parents and my friends for helping me this year and my boss for letting me take off work and working with my fishing schedule here. I'm sure he's getting a little frustrated with me, but 
Well, if you keep if you keep cracking checks and trophies, I think he'll be okay with it. Uh, I hope he's been good to me so far. So hopefully, well, yeah, I mean, he doesn't get too mad. Good luck with the James River coming up. And then, guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm. You can also give us a like on Instagram. You can give us a look at Facebook, Patreon, um, Patreon, Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeart. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.